Hello, everyone. This is Heming from OpenText Global Technical Support Team. Last time, I shared about creating a GUI test and the main UI components of a GUI test. UFT1's other key feature is, of course, the API testing. So today, I'm going to talk about the basics of what you need to know to create an API test and to work with it. So what is an API test? There are a lot of applications that has a GUI where you can physically interact with the UI elements to perform a certain action, but there are cases where the system simply does not have a GUI. A hairless or GUI-less system, or sometimes you want to exclude the impact of GUI by trying to directly communicate with the back end of the GUI application in your test. That's where API testing comes into picture. Creating an API test in UFT1 is similar with creating a GUI test. You just click the new button in the toolbar. And in the pop-up dialog, select API as the test type. Enter preferred test name and select where the test is stored. And then click Create. A blank new test opens. Toolbox pane on the left is where your API testing activities are available. You will double click or drag them to the canvas to create a test step. There are three types of activities. At the top, you will see the local activities. This is where your application app activities are stored when you import from a service definition files such as a WSO, WADO, Swagger file, or .NET assembly file. In the middle, there are the standard activities. These are the large amount of built-in activities to get you quickly started when dealing with different types of headless applications, along with the custom activities you created using extensibility. And at the bottom are the file system activities, which are the local activities that you move to the file system. By storing the activities in the file system, you can share and reuse them between tests. Just like a GUI test, you will see the properties pane on the right if you put your mouse focus on a step in the test flow. But unlike the fact that this pane has limited usage in a GUI test, it is the most important UI component for an API test. Testing a headless system is basically done by sending the request and validating the response. The properties pane is where you can configure different aspects of your request and how you'd like the responses to be checked. Take the example in the screenshot where I added a step after importing our flight API testing WSO file, the get flight step. Under the input checkpoint tab, you can supply the values of the parameters in your request and configure at a very detailed level of which nodes you'd like to be checked in the response. There are a number of other tabs that could also be useful. The events tab, which allows you to perform about anything at different stages of the test by writing C sharp codes. It could be very powerful for users who have uh, coding skills. The attachment tab allows you to check specifically the attachments and a security tab where you can configure all security related settings whenever necessary. One thing to note is that the tabs displayed can be different. Only relevant tabs appear depending on the activity type that you select. API testing is a complicated feature and there's definitely a lot more to talk about. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more topics ahead. That would be all for today, and thank you for your time.